Thank you. So how many of you have visited the United States? Have you been up to the United States? Any of you? Okay. What, what, what area? New York. New York? Okay, Orlando. Yeah, a lot of people go to Orlando. All right. So um, what I'd like to do is give you a brief presentation on Notre Dame. We have several students from Brazil who are participating in the uh, program that the country has worked with several American universities. We're one of them. That's my contact information. And if you have specific questions afterwards, feel free to contact me. I will not be the one answering your questions, but I will direct your questions to the best people to answer your questions. Uh, generally, what I'd like to talk about is to first of all give you a context for how Notre Dame fits in, a, in the American university system. There are over 2,000 universities and about 65 percent of our seniors in high school go to, to university study. Uh, about 60 percent of the very top kids go to only 20 colleges in America and Notre Dame is one of those 20 colleges. So Notre Dame is one of the most selective universities in the United States. So when you hear we're in the top 20, that's out of 2,000 universities. Um, this should flip in just a second. Uh, I'm used to talking longer than my slide. I'm a little bit more efficient today. What you have at the university, we're one of the top 15 national research universities, so a lot of research, science, engineering is done at the university. We're considered actually in the top 10 for undergraduate study. So we're even stronger in the undergraduate opportunities than, than most. And we're the top national university for the diversity of where our students come from all over the U.S. So if you come, you're going to meet students from everywhere around the United States and increasingly other countries. We're the top Catholic university, and the average student at Notre Dame was in the top 2% of the American students that could have gone to college. So it's a very selective, successful university. You're around students that are quite good. Um, if you look at American universities, America is set up differently than Brazil. If you take the top 20 national research universities in America, 19 of them are private. You're used to the public universities in your country being the, the superior academic research-based programs. It is just the opposite in the United States. However, if you take the top 30, there are six publics that are absolutely great national research universities with the privates. So we certainly mean to give credit to some of the publics, but if you come to a Notre Dame, you hear that's private. In America, that's usually viewed as superior. And uh, we're very proud of that. Notre Dame, we have 8,500 undergraduates. That may sound small, but if you look at the top 20 privates in America, we're the fourth largest among that elite group of colleges. So we're not relatively small to the way that Americans have organized their educational system at the top schools. We have 3,500 graduate, PhD, MBA, and law students. We're 90 miles southeast of Chicago, which is the second largest city in the United States. 80% uh, of our students uh, live on campus for undergraduate, so it's a little different than what you're used to in, in your uh, setup here. And certainly graduate students also have high quality housing options available to them. Uh, the rest of this slideshow is just going to give you images of Notre Dame. So I'm going to talk, but there's no more specific information. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions, so feel free to ask questions if a question comes up. Uh, the university is organized into five colleges. We have the College of Engineering, the College of Science, College of Architecture, we also have the College of Business and the College of Arts and Letters. Our uh, programs are, are strong all the way across the board. Uh, we rank, if you look at the quality of the students in the engineering and the sciences, we're probably among the top 10 
universities in the United States, top 1% of the students studying science and engineering in the US, that's our average student at the university. There's also a lot of um, research done by students working with faculty. So there's more access to faculty and research than most places. We have designed labs specifically to encourage undergraduate as well as graduate research uh, in the sciences. We're very strong in all facets of engineering, also mathematics, physics, biology. We're doing quite a bit of cancer research. We have built several buildings and work with the State University of Indiana, Indiana University on medical research as well. So if you come for a one-year program, you will find that there are some very specific strengths. We are the number one low-impact nuclear engineering school in the country. And to explain that, it, you know Lucerne, the, the high-speed uh, in Switzerland nuclear accelerator? So they create uh, research through high-impact, high-velocity collision. There's the opposite of that is low-impact, low-velocity collision that creates radiation. The number one research lab in the United States for that is at Notre Dame. So we do a lot of radiation research. Any research related to radiation that extends through the fields of physics, engineering, uh, there's very high level work being done at Notre Dame by our students and our faculty. We're very proud of that. In addition, uh, the university tries very hard to, uh, you're getting feedback. <laughs> Yeah, this is, is, is going to my ear. I'll try to ignore it. But the, the university's um, academic format is that if you come in your junior year as an undergraduate for the uh, Without Borders program, normally what we will encourage you to do is to work with one or two faculty in very specific areas of interest that you have, but also you will live in the halls with students that are studying everything. So I think you'll enjoy broadening your experience to not just be your academic field, which will be important, and your faculty will participate with you, and you'll also meet the other students doing research in that area, but you'll also get a social opportunity to look beyond that and just be part of the Notre Dame community. Notre Dame is famous in America for its sense of community. So if along with an exceptional education, you want to get to know Americans, you want to get to know international students from all over the world, uh, Notre Dame will provide you a social experience where that networking for the rest of your life and your career, you will get to know these people and you can keep track of them and they'll keep track of you. Uh, that is one of the values, the kind of the value added of a Notre Dame. So we're not only a top 10 or 15 academic university, but we're often considered by Americans as one of the very top for creating a, a loyalty and an involvement with Notre Dame for the rest of your life. Even if you're there for one year, you're part of our family. You also may want to think about coming back for graduate school. In fact, we will be honest with you. If you come for one year, we're going to talk to you about coming back and spending three to five years, depending on whether it's a, well, two to five years, depending on whether you want a master's or a PhD. But we have very serious graduate programs, and we would like to encourage more Brazilian students to come for one year, do a year at Notre Dame undergraduate, and then think about coming back for graduate study. We have extensive scholarships for graduate school. Um, it is not uh, probably going to be a high cost to you, depending on how good you are. So if you impress us during your year there, uh, we're willing to invest in you and, and provide you with what we think is a world-class education. Uh, I'd like to kind of stop. Are there any questions on the academics that you'd like to ask? Okay. Just know that uh, our degrees, when I, we add them up, I think our engineering and science uh, and pre-med programs, probably close to about 50% of our students get degrees in those fields. So it certainly is a substantial half of our students are, are in the sciences and engineering. Now, if you are a liberal arts student and you're interested in philosophy, psychology, history, right now I understand that that's not part of the borders program, but um, 
we do have exchange programs. We do have the ability to at least look at you, or if not for the, the, the one year undergrad, think about us for graduate study. We are probably one of the very top universities in the United States and in the world in philosophy, in theology, in history, political science. So we have strengths that go beyond. Our business school is ranked number one in the United States for undergraduate and very high in, at, at the MBA level. Our law school is ranked very high as well. So we're a large university with a lot of resources. Our endowment, our, our monies that our alumni have given us to invest so that we can use part of that endowment to foster higher level academic growth by our students. Our endowment is $8.3 billion. And we rank among the top 10 universities in the United States for endowment. That endowment allows us to give scholarships, allows us to hire higher quality faculty and sponsor more research by the faculty. So Notre Dame certainly has, has moved up in American society over the last 20 years. We've really kind of reached the top because our alumni have been so generous. So we're very happy to do that. We also offer internships during the summer so that if you want to work for a Notre Dame graduate somewhere in the world who's an expert or has a company that is managing fields that you're interested in, our alumni delight in assisting and connecting our students with uh, our alumni. So there's that alumni network. Probably in Brazil, you don't have that dynamic as much as there is in America. In America, the average college student, when they graduate, they have three things that are important to them for the rest of their life that they're kind of their affinity groups. Their family, their career, and the college they went to. Those are the three things that American college graduates relate to. We also have this thing in America called sports, that Americans are a little over the top involved in their sports. Uh, we have the other type of football. It's not, we have soccer, and by the way, the Notre Dame men's soccer team is ranked second in the nation right now, and the women's soccer team has been ranked the top five and has won the national championship twice. The other football, Notre Dame is the most famous American football program uh, in history is a rallying area where the students in the fall enjoy going to the games. We just played in front of 84,000 uh, fans and in front of around 30 million in the United States watching our game against our arch rival USC. We beat them, so that was good. And it's fun. There on the weekends, you go to the games, you bond socially. Um, I think if you come for the year in the uh, Without Borders program, you will get caught up in some of that social experience. It will be very different than what you've experienced at Brazilian University. I think you'll enjoy it. It'll be a little different. Uh, some of it, you won't quite understand why Americans go so crazy over things. But uh, honestly, there's a method to our madness, and it bonds these people for the rest of their lives. And if it means that we have to have those social events to get the next group of faculty to give us $20 billion in, in 15 years, then I think it's a pretty smart thing to do. So we're, we're kind of a, a unique culture in America where what you did today is going to probably matter through the rest of your life at your college. It just will be your family for life, along with your family and your, your job. And in fact, many jobs in America and careers, you keep getting uh, contacted by Notre Dame grads. Uh, I've been hired twice at other universities, uh, once at Cornell University in Ivy League school, and the person who hired me was a Notre Dame grad who found me, called me, and said, we need your expertise. And I know how well you've been trained I, because you're a Notre Dame grad like I am. And that network matters. So the alumni network for Notre Dame, and this is the most Catholic country in the world. So we think our connection as the top Catholic university in the world, your connection as the top source of Catholics in the world is a pretty nice match. Um, questions?
Um, fellowships for graduate study or the awards that our faculty have won? Undergraduate. Scholarships. Scholarships. For undergraduates, um, we have about 8,500 undergraduates. About 4,500 of them are on scholarships, so over half. The average scholarship is around $30,000 and our average cost is around 60000 so over half of our students get fellowships that pay for about half of their total costs. That cost includes books and travel, as well as tuition and room and board. If you want to do research during the summers, there's also scholarships that allow you to do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. the board program, do they have how many, how many scholarships? Ah, sure. Well, for the board, we're willing to look of, up at least 10. Right now we have three. We'd like more. Uh, generally, the only barrier is if we judge that you can do the work at Notre Dame, you will be admitted into that program. So there won't be, uh, we are prepared last year with the applicant pool. There were, in my opinion, from what I understand, uh, there were enough spots for everybody that we decided was qualified. So um, you shouldn't feel that there's going to be 80 people considered for 10 spots. Uh, we believe that we will look at uh, 10, you know, up to 10 people that qualified for those 10 spots. If we don't feel that your academic record is strong enough for Notre Dame, we'll share that with you. If we feel you're strong enough to do the work at Notre Dame, right now it is my impression that any student that was recommended by your university that we, when we looked at it, thought that they could handle the work. The first year we did it, we were slow, we were cautious, we only enrolled three, but we're ready to move up to 10 per class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we've kept it that size is we want to make sure that you get the classes you want. So uh, there's a lot of competition for the classes at Notre Dame among our own students. And we, we really promise them to give them what they want pretty much when they need it. And so we would want to do the same thing for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that you want to identify your priority of what you want to study. How do you evaluate the capacity of students to choose one to go to USDA? Sure. Well, we'll look at any national testing that you have provided. We'll look at your grades that you've done here and the recommendations from your university. I know that our dean of uh, college or of engineering was down here. So we're also coming down to really become more familiar with your programs and your faculty so that you know what we're looking for and you can tell us who you think can, can manage it. So. We have a high regard for your university. We understand that you are also one of the best universities. I presented today, we're one of the best in the United States. We understand you're one of the best in Brazil. And by one of the best, one of the very best. So we think there's a good match between the two universities. Yeah, I, I would say that, um, trying to think, the average score last year our minimum is really around 100 that that's that we're comfortable with uh, and that's kind of an old scoring system but you know there are different scoring systems but around 100 
Uh, most of our students are probably closer to about, I think, 115 or so on that, 110. Right, the ESLs, right, English as a second language. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and if, if we identify that English seems to be the only barrier, we can work with you on an English intensive English study program before you come. You know, we can work on that. That will be looked at more at Notre Dame than most schools because we're asking you to socialize with our students more than most schools. We feel that's one of the reasons why you should prefer Notre Dame, is the interaction with the other students as part of your experience. So making sure that your language skills in English are strong enough to, to be comfortable and, and very active with the students is important. Um, but generally, I think you would find that our standards are not much higher than the other universities in America, except for when it's a close number, we, we may be interested in working with you on just getting a couple, you know, a six week to, to three month intensive language experience before you join us. Yeah. If we find that you're academically wonderful and that your English is a little off, we can work with you and your school to understand what, what you need to do for us to approve your admission. Yeah. We do have about a um, hundred students or more, maybe closer to 120 from South America as undergraduates. If you look at the graduate and the undergraduate, my guess is we have closer to around 300 of our students are from, from uh, South America or Central America. Um, and we probably also have around 60 students from Puerto Rico that I would not count in that because they're part of the uh, U.S. territories. Um, any other questions? Well, I think that's the presentation. I think that covers the ground that I intended. Is there anything else that you think uh, the, the students or the public would benefit from knowing? The question I don't feel I answered well enough was on this uh, TOEFL score. Probably the best thing to do would be if you have a question on that, send an uh, email to the international office at Notre Dame. And they can definitely identify what TOEFL score for the Without Borders program they would recommend. So I've been doing this so long, I'm used to the scale, the different scoring scales, the old, the old scoring. So everything I, when I see it, is converted for me into the old scale. So the six and the seven I'm not as familiar with. Yeah. I think the more important thing is the university offers some intensive language courses mm -hmm. for people uh, to not reach the uh, right. upper level. Right, and, and if we don't offer the program, we may have a, um, an association with a program in Chicago or, or nearby that, that we would recommend. So we may offer it on campus, but if not, we will have something that we can share with you that we can set you up to do it. Yeah. Good. Sometimes students will have three options to select the university. The mm -hmm. first Mm -hmm. Kansas State. Uh, if you have uh, some rigid problem to the upper level, some mm -hmm. even I want to go first option, then I can um, mm -hmm. take the course. Then I need to go to second option. Yeah. The third option. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I will say that if you're an undergraduate, your residence experience is you're probably going to be placed in a residence hall, not all together, but we will spread you out so that you're not just staying with each other from Brazil. Uh, you will get to know each other and you will find each other. The campus, I would say it's a 10 minute walk from any part of the campus to another part of the central campus. So it's, it's not so large that you can't get around. Now we tend to walk fast. So 10 minutes is not a slow walk. Uh, slow walk, probably it's 20 minutes, but you know, you know, just a normal, healthy, young adult walking uh, in America is probably 10 to 15 minute walk from one end of the campus to the other. Some of us jog, run, and others have bikes. And um, There's lots of different transportation. Uh, the campus is beautiful. Uh, it is viewed as one of the great American universities for just campus beauty. It's like what we say iconic. People come just who aren't even interested in going to college. They didn't come because they've heard about the campus and want to visit it. We're the top tourist attraction in about a 100-mile radius uh, for Americans. Notre Dame is kind of a place a lot of Americans stop just because they've always heard of it. So it is, you feel like you're living in a park, and most of the halls feel very nice. The, the residence halls are very high quality. The other part of it is you will have a roommate from a very different type of program from a different part of the country or the world, and I think you'll enjoy that. So. Good. Yeah. 80%. And about 90% of the juniors live in the dorms. Mm hmm The, the dorm that you live in, you move in as a freshman your first year, and you stay in the same dorm all the years that you are there if you wish. So you can stay in that same dorm for four years. So you get to know the students very well. It's, it's another family environment. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.